What's up, Internet? I'm north of the border, eh? <laughs> At the TED conference? It's not short for Theodore, but nobody calls me Thomas, so it's cool. It's Tom and Ted. Yes, I... Canada. <laughs> Seriously, though, everybody here, very nice, very polite. Especially the whales. Welcome to Futurescape. My name is Kirthi Roberts, and I'm the producer of the show, where we discuss innovations, possibilities, and probable realities, seemingly good or bad, of the future, today. In this video, I will do two things. First, I will share and discuss a few recent examples from the music industry, including cats, art and photography, politics, and an impressive real-time demonstration of swapping the face and voice of the presenter of a TED Talk with that of the TED Talks host, Chris Anderson. And secondly, I'll share with you some of the best available tools and strategies on how to protect yourself from deep fakes. And given the topic of discussion, most of my voice in this video will be generated from an AI model, trained on data from my actual voice. I only fed less than five minutes of my voice into the model, and I will reserve my judgment as to how good it is or not, but would love to hear from the viewers and subscribers if you thought it resembled my actual voice or not. Starting with an example of one from the music industry, I will let comedian and satirist John Oliver introduce this one for me. And the YouTuber Grande used ChatGPT to generate lyrics answering the prompt, write an Eminem rap song about cats, with some stellar results. Cats, 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 always on the prowl. They're sneaky and sly, with their eyes on the goal. They're the kings of the house, they rule with the pearl. Eminem loves cats, can't you tell from this first? They're independent, they do what they please, but they always come back when you have some teeth. They rub against your legs, they pull in your ear. They're the best companions, they're always near. Meow, meow, meow. meow, meow, meow. They're the kings of the house. They rip the show. They don't need a spouse. That's not bad, right? From, they always come back when you have some cheese. The second example is from the recent Real TED conference in Vancouver, which the fake Tom Cruise was pretending to be at. Here's Chris Anderson, the host and the head of the TED organization and conference, inviting lawyer turned AI developer from Down Under, now co-founder and CEO of Metaphysic, to demonstrate his hyper real synthetic media AI technology in real time. Incidentally, Tom Graham and his company Metaphysic are also responsible for the Tom Cruise in Vancouver clip you saw earlier, among many other creations of synthetic media with well-known Hollywood personalities. We take kind of real-world data, we train these neural nets, and it can more accurately than VFX or CGI really create this content that looks and feels so natural. So there we go. This is, um, you know, a live real-time model of Chris um, on top of me. Um, running in real time. <laughs> I'm so uncomfortable with this. <laughs> can it do voice as well? Um, um, we, we think it can. We're, we're, we're really pushing, we're really pushing the limits of AI technology now. And while he's developing and testing the limits of generative AI, he expresses concern and sees raising awareness as part of his objective. Speaking of misinformation, before we look at the next example and try to understand how to protect ourselves from deep fakes or synthetic media, I'd like to share something quite significant in the world of artificial intelligence that happened just this week. Geoffrey Hinton, a British-Canadian psychologist and computer scientist based in Toronto, often touted as the godfather of AI and the recipient of the 2018 Turing Award, effectively the Nobel Prize in Computer Science, has been behind some of the greatest advances in AI at Google for over a decade. He quit his job at Google just this week, citing concerns about the power of misinformation and the existential threat to humans from AI, and wanted to speak more openly about his concerns. There is a lot more to this story of Professor Jeffrey Hinton's resignation at Google and his concerns, and I will cover it further in a separate video. But moving on, the next example is from the world of art and photography, more specifically from a prestigious competition called the Sony World Photography Awards. An artist who submitted an AI-generated image won the first prize, but only disclosed it after winning the prize. He said after, according to Art News that reported on it, that AI images and photography should not compete in an award like this. That they are different entities, 
and therefore he would not accept the award. He went on to urge the jury to give his prize money to a photography festival in Odessa, Ukraine, instead. Sony was neither flattered nor impressed, and according to Art News that reported this story, issued a statement that they have suspended their activities with him and removed him from the competition, and that they no longer are able to engage in a meaningful and constructive dialogue with him. Another recent example, which was neither playful nor making a statement about technology capability, was clearly more malicious in nature. When the US Republican National Committee for the first time released a 100% AI-generated attack video against President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, with fictitious reports of domestic and international crises and the dystopian future it suggests if they are to win in 2024. The manipulation or the spreading of misinformation is nothing new to our species, perhaps even unique to Homo sapiens, but the use case of using the power of generative AI for this purpose might be just the tip of the iceberg as it relates to the capacity of at least some members of the human species, aka bad actors, to use it for harmful, egregious and nefarious purposes. Precisely what the godfather of AI Jeffrey Hinton quit Google and warned us about earlier this week. To wrap up the list of deep fakes or synthetic media on a lighter note, here's one that I must admit I fell for myself when I first saw it several weeks back. So now that we've seen some deep fakes and synthetic media in a variety of contexts, how do we protect ourselves from falling for it? and effectively becoming the intended target audience. For starters, here is a list of resources that might help. Sensity AI, an online platform dedicated to deepfake detection. Deepware Scanner, an open source forensic tool. deepfake Ometer, another open platform for deepfake detection. Reality Defender, an enterprise-grade deepfake detection tool. And no, I didn't make this up, duck duck goose another enterprise-grade solution for deepfakes. These are just some examples of deepfake detection software available today. However, it's important to remember that even these tools are going to evolve rapidly over time, and they are themselves unlikely to be completely foolproof. And outside of that, given the rapid advancements in artificial intelligence, unfortunately, I believe it is only going to get worse from here before it gets better. And whether we like it or not, Going forward, we all need to heighten our awareness and use common sense practices and improve our game to protect ourselves and others from deep fakes and be responsible consumers, information distributors or content generators, regardless of our respective professions. The good news is that there are some simple things we can do right now. And here are some common sense best practices that could help to that end. Be wary of sensational or provocative headlines especially those related to political or social issues, as deep fakes may be used to spread misinformation or polarize populations. Use fact-checking tools or websites to verify the accuracy of news or information, such as Snopes or factcheck.org. Use reverse image search tools to verify the authenticity of images, such as Google Images or the Canadian image search engine, TinEye, so that you can stay ahead of doctored images and false narratives that may be trying to spread propaganda or misinformation. Always verify and check the credibility of the source of any news or information before believing or sharing it. Always check the date of the article or news before sharing it, as sometimes old news or information is circulated as new to create confusion or to mislead people. Rely on trusted sources only for news and information. Use secure communication channels to share sensitive or confidential information. Encrypted messaging apps such as Signal or Telegram can be used for secure communication. Be cautious of social media and avoid sharing or retweeting unverified news or information with others. Educate yourself about deepfakes and about technology in general. Most people will find it challenging to keep up with the pace of technology given all other priorities in one's life, so reach out to your favorite trusted technophile friend or colleague Report suspicious activity to the appropriate authorities or platform moderators to help prevent its spread and protect others. And last but not least, if you are an AI or software architect or developer, you could do your part in being part of the solution. And similarly, if you are a policymaker or in the legal profession, there is much you can do through new laws and regulations 
to provide protection for the rest of us and to deter the bad actors out there who use the technology for nefarious motives. So that's it folks for this episode of Futurescape. Thanks for watching and if you got value, please like and subscribe and please let me know your thoughts and comments right below. Until next time, be safe and be well.